Hello and welcome to this video cast from the Reproductive Science Center of the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm Dr. Kristen Ivani, Lab Director at RSC. Many of the most important and exciting events that occur in a patient's IVF cycle occur right here in the embryology lab, a realm where most people never see. So let's go in and have a look and see what goes on behind the scenes. We'll start with the first step of the IVF cycle, the egg retrieval process. The IVF lab is located next to the operating room where a doctor collects follicular fluid from the ovaries into a tube. The nurse passes this tube containing the follicular aspirate to an embryologist who then pours the tube into a dish and looks for the eggs under the microscope. After locating the eggs, the embryologist rinses them and places them into a holding dish. After all of the eggs have been retrieved, the eggs are rinsed a second time and the embryologist assigns each a maturity grade. The oocytes are then placed into a dish labeled with the patient's name and a unique identifier number and then the embryologist puts the dish into the incubator. If the couple is using fresh sperm, the male partner goes into a private collection room and collects a sperm sample at the same time the egg retrieval is taking place. When he brings his sample to the embryologist, his identification is verified with a photo ID. Once the sample's been logged in, it's brought into the IVF laboratory and placed on the counter at room temperature. A timer set for 30 minutes until processing begins. Approximately four to six hours after the egg retrieval, we inseminate the eggs. To avoid any mix-ups, two embryologists confirm the identity of the sperm and eggs before insemination. At this point, the embryologist will perform one of two insemination techniques. One is called microdrop or standard IVF insemination, in which sperm and eggs are combined in a petri dish. The other is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, in which an individual sperm is injected into the egg under the microscope. We make the choice of insemination methods based on sperm quality. Long before the egg retrieval and before the female partner's IVF cycle has even started, the male partner has already given a semen sample for evaluation. This gives us an idea of his sperm quality and also indicates which of the two methods of insemination this couple will need. We use ICSI for patients with low sperm count, low sperm motility, or poor sperm morphology. ICSI can also be used for patients who have had poor fertilization results from a prior IVF cycle. With the ICSI technique, an embryologist selects a single sperm cell and uses a tiny needle to inject it into the egg under a microscope. But if the sperm sample appears normal and we decide to use standard insemination, the embryologist will inseminate the eggs by placing the eggs and sperm together into a dish of insemination medium. This media is specially designed to facilitate fertilization and development over the next half day. Once all of the eggs have been inseminated, the embryologist puts them back into the incubator until the following morning. This completes the process on the day of the egg retrieval, which we call day zero. The next morning, on day one, we do a fertilization check under a microscope to, in order to see how many eggs have fertilized normally. At this point in time, we're looking for the presence of two pronuclei one nucleus from the sperm cell and one nucleus from the egg. The pronuclei contain the genetic information from the mother and the father. If we don't see any pronuclei, that means the egg did not fertilize. If we see just one pronucleus, or if we see more than two, the egg has fertilized abnormally and would not be used for transfer or freezing. At this point, the embryologists separate out the embryos that have two pronuclei. These embryos are called zygotes, two PNs, or fertilized eggs terms can be used interchangeably. The embryologist puts these new embryos into a fresh dish of media, media that supports the early stages of embryo development. In most cases, the embryologist doesn't look at the embryos again until the next day, day two. At this point, we're hoping to see that each embryo has four cells. We grade the embryos on a scale of one to five, where one is a perfect quality embryo and five is a poor quality embryo. Often patients will have a range of embryo quality with some good and some fair quality. Once again, we return the embryos to the incubator because the embryos have a better chance of growing if they're not out of the incubator for extended periods of time. 
These embryos are being evaluated on the morning of day three. We put the embryos onto an inverted microscope and grade the embryos on a scale of one to five. You can focus up and down through the different planes of the embryo to get an accurate number of the cells that are present. We use the inverted microscope to evaluate the embryo quality on the morning of day three. On this embryo, we can see it has eight cells, but some of the cells are smaller than others. This embryo might receive a slightly lower grade. This embryo, while having nice, even blastomeres, or cells, is still only a four-cell embryo on day three. We'd like the embryos to be six to eight cell. This embryo is a little bit delayed. This embryo looks nice. It's got eight nice cells, all approximately the same size, and the embryo is starting to undergo compaction, which is the next stage of embryo development. On the morning of day three, we decide if the patient will have an embryo transfer that day or on day five. The physician will have already discussed these options with the patient ahead of time. If we have several good quality embryos that are eight cell on the morning of day three, there's a good chance the patient will have a day five embryo transfer. The physician calls the patient in the morning to say that there will be a day five transfer and they'll schedule the transfer time for two days later. We then move the embryos again into yet another type of culture media that supports growth from day three to day five. We then leave the embryos undisturbed until the morning of day five. By day five, the embryos have gone through significant changes and each embryo has grown from eight cells to somewhere around 60 to 100 cells. These embryos are called blastocysts and they are differentiating into two cell types. One is called the inner cell mass that becomes the baby, and the other cell type is the trophectoderm, which becomes the placenta. We grade those embryos based on development and quality and decide which will be transferred to the uterus. The number of transferred embryos will typically be fewer for a blastocyst or day five transfer than for a day three transfer. There are a number of reasons for having a blastocyst transfer. Pregnancy and implantation rates are higher for blastocysts. We can limit the number of higher order multiple pregnancies, triplets and quadruplets, by transferring fewer embryos with higher developmental potential. Blastocyst transfer also better reflects the natural process as well. Transferring embryos to the uterus five to six days post insemination results in a uterine environment that more closely resembles natural conception. However, not every patient is a candidate for blastocyst transfer. Patients with delayed embryo development or who have very few embryos are not good candidates for blastocyst development. One technique gaining popularity is ESET, or elective single embryo transfer. This may be used for patients who want to transfer only one embryo because they face medical risks if they conceive multiples. If a patient has more good quality embryos than she needs for transfer, we can cryopreserve or freeze the extra embryos for use in a future cycle. Embryos can be frozen by one of two methods, slow or conventional freezing, or by an ultra-rapid method called vitrification. Both methods yield good survival and success rates. A good cryopreservation program is critical because it allows the patient to limit the number of embryos transferred on either day three or at the blastocyst stage because we have confidence that if the fresh cycle was not successful, then the patient still has a good chance at a successful pregnancy using frozen embryos. The primary goal of cryopreservation is to dehydrate the embryonic cells first because they contain mostly water. We then use a cryoprotectant buffer that surrounds and protects the cells during the freezing process. The embryos are stored in liquid nitrogen at a temperature of minus 196 degrees. One technological breakthrough that has brought hope to thousands of couples worldwide is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD. It is a diagnostic test performed on embryos to help detect chromosomal abnormalities or a known genetic disorder. With PGD, a single cell is removed from an embryo and analyzed for a specific anomaly. PGD is most frequently recommended for patients who are at risk for genetic disorders such as cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs disease, or thalassemia. PGD may also be helpful for patients with unexplained infertility, recurrent miscarriages, unsuccessful IVF cycles, and advanced maternal age. In these cases, the most likely cause is a chromosome abnormality, which PGD can detect. 
You can learn much more about PGD and other IVF lab services on our website by typing your inquiry into the search bar. Patients also ask about qualifications of the embryology team. Our senior embryologists are board certified by the American Association of Bioanalysts and hold advanced degrees in clinical lab science and animal reproductive physiology. In addition, our laboratory is accredited by the College of American Pathologists and maintains California State Clinical Laboratory and State Tissue Bank licenses. Our lab team is happy to answer any lab questions you may have along the way during your treatment, and we are honored to be a part of this journey with you. From everyone at Reproductive Science Center, thank you for spending time with us to learn more about our embryology lab and the work we do behind the scenes to help boost your chance of success.